I can't believe I'm starting another video like this again, but if you're a dog pack supporter, I genuinely encourage you to watch this video all the way through. And the reason I say that is because I'm going to try to present some information to you in the most unbiased and fairest way possible. For the last month, I've been claiming throughout my videos that dog pack isn't really a reliable or trustworthy individual, and he's not really as protected as he seems. And today, I want to show you something that will kind of make you question your sources a little bit. I've personally been researching Dogpack a lot. I've been going into a lot of his profiles, a lot of his posts, his tweets, some of the stuff he said to try to find any inconsistencies and discrepancies. And recently, someone by the name of Cope and Seethe YT, it's important that I credit them, did a good job of compiling some information that I've personally had issues with and some extra stuff over on a Twitter thread. So let's cover that. The thread starts with, so the Daily Mail released an article on the Mr. Beast stuff a few days ago where they included the full cease and desist and named Dogpack 404. And as as we were thinking of having a look at him anyway, here's a thread and video. Enjoy. One of the earliest claims that I made in one of my initial Mr. Beast videos is that Dogpack isn't actually going to be protected by any whistleblower laws in regards to a cease and desist because more than likely, the cease and desist was never actually about restricting Dogpack or other employees from talking about anything potentially illegal. So let's take a look at what the cease and desist actually entails, starting with number one, violations of the social media restriction. When you join Mr. Beast as a trial period employee in March of 2024, you voluntarily entered into a binding NDA agreement with Mr. Beast. That NDA agreement included a social media restriction clause, which survives your departure from the company. It provides social media restriction. Employees shall not post anything on social media about the company, Jimmy Donaldson, or the employee's employment with the company. Let's keep reading this because it'll tie into some other arguments I have to make a little bit later. You have willfully violated the clause by posting about Mr. Beast, Jimmy Donaldson, and your employment with Mr. Beast on social media. Specifically, Specifically, you have made numerous posts to Reddit under the username you, Mr. Beast Creative, and to Twitter and YouTube under the username at Dogpack404. In one video, you even held up your NDA agreement with Mr. Beast while willfully violating its terms by discussing Mr. Beast and publicly posting the video on YouTube. So, he can definitely get screwed for that, 100% of the way. In your videos and posts, you have levied false and defamatory allegations against Mr. Beast and Jimmy Donaldson. You have no understanding of the inner workings of Mr. Beast given that you only spent three weeks at the company on a trial basis before you were fired for conduct even you have characterized as inappropriate. You did not make it to the end of your 90 day trial period without repeatedly ignoring your supervisor and then attempting to secretly spend company resources on something you described as a toy. The interesting part about that is that there's something that actually vaguely corroborates this statement because in another tweet Dogpack made in response to somebody else asking him about misappropriating company funds, he says this. Anyways, after that, I sent a business expense request for an Apple Vision Pro, which I was told the company wanted to get everyone. This is when they were new and didn't seem like garbage. I sent the request to the wrong person, even though it was the person HR told me to send it to, but it never got purchased, and even if it had, it would have been owned by the company. Keep in mind, I'm not saying that he was secretly trying to steal company resources and use it on an Apple Vision Pro. I'm connecting the fact that there is something to suggest, per Dogpack's own words, that Dogpack was a attempting to use company funds on things that are completely irrelevant to his employment. During your brief period at Mr. Beast, you sought to attribute your inappropriate conduct to programming from being raised with access to an iPad and bad mental health. But there is no excuse for acknowledging the terms of your agreement while simultaneously going out of your way to violate them. Let me bring up another inconsistency. In multiple cases, Dogpack has said that he doesn't have any mental illnesses and that he's quote unquote not suicidal, which is something Something very strange to bring up now that I think about it. But yet in this cease and desist, it said that he used his mental illness as an excuse or explanation for his behavior. In another post, he also elaborates how he microdosed on shrooms for his depression, which I find very peculiar. If Dogpack is inconsistent and lying about these caveats, I wonder what else he could be embellishing or inconsistent about. It really makes you wonder. Now, before I lose you, because I know there's going to be some die-hard Dogpack supporters, I want to say that, yes, Dogpack has shown a light on some very important and concerning issues. Yes, he's exposed some things that put the integrity and credibility of Mr. Beast on the line, but where exactly did the motivation to do so come from? As I've mentioned in the past, while Dogpack may have some very good secrets to expose and make people aware of, his behavior will inevitably bite him in the ass and give Mr. Beast plenty of ammunition to discredit him in the future. I've been 
warning everyone about this since the beginning of August because I really wanted to see Dogpack execute one of YouTube's largest exposés spectacularly. But it looks like that ship is crashing very fast and it's all fault of Dogpack himself. Now speaking about motivations, let's look at the rest of the cease and desist. On your last day at Mr. Beast in April, the day you were fired, you pleaded for your job back, insisting Mr. Beast was a place you wanted to work. You asked for a second chance for your trial period and you asked to later reapply to the company. You even sought advice on how to be successful if you were to apply to work for Mr. Beast again in the future. Unlike the narratives you spun to cast yourself as the victim when being terminated for conduct that at a minimum demonstrates a lack of judgment. Your communicated desire to be a part of Mr. Beast remain unchanged over the course of that nearly hour-long meeting. That is because the information you were exposed to during your trial period to Mr. Beast confirmed that it is a great company and a great place to work. Your more recent social media posts occurred at a time when you would have no new information or insight from inside Mr. Beast. Instead of speaking about the positive experience you had at Mr. Beast that apparently caused you to desperately want to return to the company, your posts contained misinformation and false statements designed to harm Mr. Beast and Jimmy Donaldson. Somebody in my comment section was spewing some bullshit about Dogpack being the best and most qualified individual to be handling this expose, and yes, I will put you on blast and even show your comment. Is this really your hero? Someone who only worked at Mr. Beast for three weeks and didn't actually have inside experience per this cease and desist? Is this guy really the most qualified person to be handling this? Because based on this, he never was, and that will become more apparent the more we look at this thread. Back to the cease and desist. Number two, violations of the confidential information provision. Your NDA agreement with Mr. Beast also contains a provision prohibiting disclosure of any proprietary or confidential information you gain during the roughly three weeks you worked at Mr. Beast as a trial employee. That includes the following. Before I read this, I want to pat myself on the back because I actually made this educated guess myself about a month ago, and that was that based on his initial video, I believe Dogpack was being cease and desisted over exposing information in regards to marketing strategies, such as Mr. Beast planned to do a giveaway with Feastables in October, which I was absolutely right about. The rest of this says, information or media about Jimmy Donaldson, employee and personnel information, any manuals, procedures, processes, forms, systems, guidelines, other proprietary information developed and obtained by the company for use in its business and related documents, materials, knowledge, or other confidential business information of any nature whatsoever disclosed or developed by employee, technical and business information and strategies relating to methods, marketing, merchandising, selling, licensing, servicing, customer lists, records, or financial information, manuals, or company strategic plans or operational objectives, which are all things that you can go look at his first video and identify for yourself. Also, there's this. Any information regarding Jimmy Donaldson and any Mr. Beast related content or any content captured on Mr. Beast sets, premises, locations used by Mr. Beast, the employer's methods, policies, procedures, techniques, research or development, yada, yada, yada. You understand. He did break that NDA and he's not protected by any whistleblower agreements because the NDA was never supposed to restrict him from talking about what Mr. Beast did several years ago in regards to illegal lotteries. It was supposed to stop him from talking about things such as marketing strategies, and personal employee information, such as Mac. Some people might be wondering why I sound so upset about this or why anyone holding similar opinions to mine might be so upset about this. It's not because we are in favor or in support of Mr. Beast. The reason why this is so infuriating to some is because while Dogpack did have a good story, it is evident he went about this in the worst way possible and left himself open to get discredited, become untrustworthy, and make himself an unreliable narrator, which has become all too apparent recently, especially with him loosely and unverifiably alleging someone of being a woman and dog abuser. The, he used the word alleged to protect himself legally, or that's why he's still verifying information excuses don't work. Not at all, and most people fail to see why. The reason these excuses don't work is not because he used words like alleged or verified, it's that he ran unverified information, which makes him a target for detractors to ruin his credibility. Someone else in my comment section said, oh, so he made one mistake. Is that enough to dig deeper into someone and find out if they kept screwing up? Uh, yeah. 
it is. We're seeing this happen in real time. We're literally unraveling information that shows Dogpack is incapable of properly presenting evidence or information. Moving on to the rest of the thread, Copenseed says, So it seems that this lines up with Dogpack working for Mr. Beast for around three weeks, from the time he signed the NDA to the 19th of April. This may come as a surprise to some, as his Reddit AMA is a bit misleading. Also, to no one's surprise, that NDA looks like it could be an issue for him. Let's look at what Dogpack had to say in this Reddit thread. Any anonymous proof of employment, and then Mr. Beast created which is Dogpack says, I showed my face with face stubs on my Twitter. And then another person says, is there a reference to be later disclosed with a beginning Kendrick line? In the video, you mentioned employment from Feb to May, but post say March to May. Just curious why the difference. Then Dogpack says, I was working a bit with them in February, trial period in March, and then 90 day contract from April 1st to end of June. Kendrick song references current allegations against Ava Chris Tyson. So verifiably, he lied. Copen C then says, though personally we found the section going over his exit from the company particularly hilarious, where he apparently characterized his own conduct as inappropriate and attempted to secretly spend company funds on a toy. What the fuck? Aside from begging for his job back, he also blamed his issues on being raised with access to an iPad. We already covered that, so we're moving on. Copen C also says, so as most of you will know, Dogpack's third video has been getting less than positive responses due to the claims within it, so let's move on and just dig into him a bit. Dogpack is most known on Reddit as Mr. Beast Creative, but to really understand him, we'll need to introduce you to his alt, the Five Head Guy. This alt seems to be the reason he was hired and basically used the subreddit to get the attention of the Mr. Beast team. And then we have a video he uploaded and posted where it's just him, you know, memeing around doing some absolute bullshittery, but that's besides the point. Today, we're going to be begging for a job in the Mr. Beast subreddit. However, Jimmy was not Dogpack's first love. It seems that he also did this with the XQC subreddit until he felt ignored, became annoying, and was told to fuck off. Oh, so this guy appears to have been clout chasing from the very beginning. What a shocker. Also, despite Dogpack's claims to never have been a drug user, that alt seems to tell a different story, at one point on r slash stories, funnily enough. This is where we can start corroborating a little bit more about Dogpack actually not joking about being a drug user, as some people have ignorantly claimed that everything he said is just jokes to avoid actually criticizing him. This is what Dogpack had to say in regards to these accusations. To be clear, because some people can't tell when I'm joking, I have never been a drug user. Weed makes me anxious. I tried mic dosing shrooms for depression and anxiety for a week over three months ago. Honestly, the taste just made me sick, so I stopped. Wouldn't recommend anyone to use illicit drugs, but I'd consider myself an advocate for psychedelic research. Don't really care to filter everything I say through lawyers and PR people. Sometimes I say dumb shit, but my video was well-researched. I'd obviously rather Mr. Beast just focus on disproving the evidence than trying to publicly destroy my character with baseless drug use and mental health accusations. But it appears that's the only option they have. Well, first of all, evidently, these are not baseless accusations per your own remarks, statements, and corroborations even included in this tweet, which you probably should have proofread. Then we have this post by also Dogpack under the user that five head guy and he says, I think I died. Dude, when I read this, it reminded me exactly of my first shallow DMT experience. Shallow meaning I didn't go to hyperspace and interact with alien beings of unfathomable intelligence that spoke with light, but rather more of this in-between space. My experience was almost exactly the same for one to two minutes. I was out, fully left my body and felt extremely at peace. My girlfriend was cuddling me at the time and said my eyes open and my fingertips started to go cold, but I still had a heartbeat so so she wasn't too worried. Okay, so we're just supposed to believe that this guy is mentally stable and has never done drugs before? Yeah, right. Even a moron can see he's been lying through his teeth this last month. This one right here is particularly interesting because we also have this DMT thread where he's saying, been sitting in my hot car for months, LMAO, recoverable or trash? And then we see a canister of what appears to be a, like a dab-like substance. And if you don't know what dab is, it's uh, basically weed, concentrate, or something like that. Uh, I'm not saying that it is, it just looks like it. And then he replies with, yeah, I wouldn't risk it as is. I don't know if it's possible to like add it to the bark of a future extraction or something to recover it or if it's just useless at this point. So per his own posts, he's actually thoroughly involved in doing drugs such as DMT. So <laughs> I don't know what to tell any of you who are still saying he's just joking. Evidently, again, he's just been lying. 
Copen Seath goes on to say, that's not all from the alt, but before we get to it, here is Dogpack posting on main about Jimmy being the Antichrist, something he also seems to have included in his Google Doc for some reason. This is a post by Mr. Beast Creative, aka also Dogpack, and he says, SS, I guess some talking points you tinfoil hatters might find interesting. One, YouTubers are financially incentivized to promote consumerism to their young audiences. No fucking shit. Two, multiple Mr. Beast employees, including real Christians, suggested to me that Mr. Beast may be under the control of Satan. I wonder why anyone would ever suggest this. Number three, lots of weirdos at the company. See, Chris Tyson. Okay, that's that's true. Now let's go look at what he replied. I'm not Christian, but something about the book of Revelation, Jimmy bought a church and converted it into a studio, literally removing imagery of Jesus and replacing it with a mark of the beast. He also died and rose on the third day, 50 hours buried alive. Performs great miracles. Also endorses Neuralink, which apparently adds up to 666 somehow. People I spoke to very strongly believe Neuralink was the mark of the beast. Yeah, probably some other stuff I'm forgetting. Okay, so we can see that he's incredibly <laughs> schizo and isn't afraid of schizo posting. So again, to say that this person isn't completely unhinged is a far reach. Something that I find extremely peculiar about Mr. Beast is that he actually was going to include a biblical beast section in his video, but he says that he cut this part from the video because it's obviously extreme speculation. Okay, is he aware that he also should have cut off the first part of his video in his most recent upload because it was also extreme speculation? Oh, and while we're on that, also the end of his video since he's speculating that Mr. Beast is potentially a womanizer? Okay. Back to the alt. Dogpack has made a lot of claims about Mr. Beast and lists himself as a former employee to support this, but these claims aren't new. He was making these claims long before he worked there. Allegation that Mr. Beast wasn't using random subscribers in his videos back in December 2023. He accused Mr. Beast of running shady sweepstakes in February, you know, while he was also apparently working with them. His criticism of Team C's isn't new either. He seemed pretty critical on alt. Interestingly, by March, he's much more positive. Nice to see him back to normal after he got fired. Now let's look at what Dogpack had to say. Question about Big Dog Ranch Rescue. Most big actors in philanthropy are in it for unethical reasons. Look at how the world's largest plastic polluter sponsored Team C's, which would be Coca-Cola. Look into the companies funding Mr. Beast food banks, factory farmers, and deforestation groups, or the other companies that sponsor his charities. They're all shady. It goes something like this. A person provides a genuine value to the world in exchange for their products and services the world makes them wealthy. Leeches try to attach themselves to that person to extract their wealth and influence for their own agendas. The once good reputation of that person and company dies as they become infected by leeches. Mr. Beast has been on stage 2 for a while. His wealth and influence has attracted leeches and his companies are infected. Then Dogpack made this post, waste generated by Mr. Beast. I get it, but there's always some resource cost for entertainment. Mr. Beast is one of the few entertainment companies that actually offsets their negative impacts with positive ones. Philanthropy. Then he makes this post on July 31st, something that I myself also dug into in a previous video, and he says, Some updates. I was originally going to expose Mr. Beast's philanthropy efforts being more for aiding private interests and boosting Mr. Beast's image than actually doing anything good. But in that investigation, I came across something far more interesting that no one else has ever discovered that'll be far more damaging for Mr. Beast's career. Interesting how quickly he flipped the script in regards to Mr. Beast doing something that positively offsets their negative output. Very interesting, Dogpack. I wonder if you could remain any more consistent. Back on the thread, Copenseed says this, He made a ton of comments highly critical of Mr. Beast in the months before he tried getting a job there, including claiming that a Mr. Beast challenge induced Stockholm Syndrome in its contestants. This post here is actually extremely strange. Look at what Dogpack posted. Meta, why the comment section is so heavily moderated. Doors were open. Yeah, if you want to lose $250,000, why would anyone ever complain about workplace harassment when they can just quit? Obviously, there's a monetary incentive to stay. I don't know what happened behind the scenes. I'd hope you would make it safe for everyone. I'm just saying the premise of trapping two strangers together in hopes they fall in love for a YouTube video is ethically questionable. If that was the intention, as implied by the post I was responding to, there was no insinuation. I speculated on what the intention of the video was. Maybe I shouldn't have, but it's not disgusting anyone's personal lives or choices. It's all public. If you want people to know what rules they are breaking, perhaps you should tell them in the mod comments instead of a generic copy-paste that doesn't often apply. In this post, he is already admitting to himself that he is doing some very, very hardcore reaching and speculation, so he's aware that a lot of the time he's making these conjectures and guesses that aren't entirely backed in logic. I wonder where else he could have possibly done that. <laughs> 
Okay, so this next screenshot actually predates the one I just read, and he's saying, why the comment section is so heavily moderated? I'll throw an example of a comment I made that the mods removed. It has nothing to do with anyone's personal lives or choices. It's purely criticism of the latest video. The challenge basically induces Stockholm Syndrome, where you're forced to be with a person in a mentally exhausting environment. Would be easy for one contestant to take advantage of the other. Essentially, you have to date me, or I'll leave you, and you'll lose 250k. Crazy power dynamic. Criticism is no longer allowed here, unfortunately. Okay, so some thing that I need to bring up is like, why are you specifically hypothesizing that that's the intent behind the Mr. Beast production? Why are you specifically making these conjectures? It's like you're looking for worst case scenario in all of these. There's no nuance, no foresight. It's all weird and frankly creepy hypotheticals one would make to specifically criticize something bad that might never happen and has not happened. Moving back to Maine again, one thing that's interesting but strange was the inclusion of CoffeeZilla regarding Mr. Beast crypto scams, originally supposed to be his part 2 video, and he references coffee in his document, which is later removed. Finally, here is Dogpack making claims towards Mr. Beast over several other things with no evidence, including tax evasion and promoting Prism on Reddit while arguing with a random. This part right here, this is something that I've been wanting to touch on forever, and we can finally do it. Let's just read the thread. Do you believe the only element of corruption is the intention to make their videos addictive? Dogpack then says, Not even close. I think Mr. Beast could be investigated by the IRS, FTC, SEC, FBI, and OSHA, and each organization would find its own unique case of corruption. The problem is that corrupt higher-ups at Jimmy's company can't get fired because if they do, they'll go to Time Magazine and destroy the whole company, so Jimmy is in an impossible position. Internally, people understand that the house of cards has to collapse. So in this statement alone, he's implying that Jimmy isn't exactly responsible for issues such as LaCoya. He's directly stating that Jimmy could be blackmailed at any time by these people, which is an unbacked claim, by the way. We don't know that. So why in your series, Dogpack, do you implicate Jimmy as the mastermind behind the negativities at Mr. Beast? Even Jake Weddle gives leniency to Mr. Beast, and according to him, he was directly negatively impacted by Jimmy on an emotional level. It's very interesting. I really wonder what your motives are, Dogpack. Moving on. So what other pieces of corruption would you say are present? How else are they corrupt? Then Mr. Beast Creative, Don Pack says, tax evasion, illegal lotteries, fraud, crypto scams, inappropriately interacting with children, horrible safety compliance, just overall terrible production practices, etc. Hard to explain everything broadly, it's the largest game show in the world and they don't follow the regulations that traditional game shows have to follow. May I ask why you haven't gone to the authorities about this? And then Dogpack says this. Fair question. I guess I just think they wouldn't do anything. I mean, I know other former employees who have gone to the media, and even right now, one of Mr. Beast's co-stars, Chris Tyson, is being accused of owning illegal depictions of minors, and the evidence is strong, but authorities getting involved seems unlikely. Someone else then asks, why would the US authorities not investigate Chris Tyson if a child sex crime has been committed? And then somebody else replies with, they'll never answer because they never answer any of the real questions questions. They're literally lying. So Dogpack has been making unbacked claims without actually ever authenticating the information, verifying or showing evidence of the fact for quite a while now, while under the identity of being a Mr. Beast employee, keep in mind. He even implicated Chris Tyson of owning child pornography. While yes, Chris Tyson's ownership of Shadman art and God knows what else is disgusting, which I cover very thoroughly by the way in one of my other videos, if you were to present that to authorities, more than likely they would not constitute that as CSIM. So the implication Dogpack made there is wild and shows his blatant disregard for accurate claims or remarks. If he's unwilling to thoroughly back his accusations and embellish information like this, I wonder what else he has embellished or lied about to sensationalize his claims. This is the part that I'm going to enjoy getting into and it's going to be really funny. Okay, cool. I can understand why they fired you, to be honest, your failure to understand basic instructions. But do you have any actual proof that you did work for him? And then Dogpack replies with, you have poor reading comprehension and are defending someone who bought and distributed sexual illustrations of minors as well as sent sexually suggestive messages and Snapchats to a Minor. I think I'm good on sending you any of my info, bro. Someone then replies with, oh cool, a new claim. Is this pulled out of your ass like you working for Mr. Beast or is there actual screenshots of this? And then he cites Prism. 
He cites Prism of all people. A little bit of lore for those of you who don't know. I actually dragged this dude through the mud. I dragged Prism through the mud because he embellished and lied about some of the information he presented. He made some very unbacked insinuations and very charged remarks and claims to try to carry the idea that Chris Tyson was grooming minors. This was all before anything was actually substantiated or corroborated, by the way. This was all before anybody actually did any investigation in regards to prove any of these claims. So here we have Dog Pack running with information that is very tainted, that is very charged, that is very very biased, which goes to show that Dogpack doesn't actually have any discernment or capabilities of vetting his resources or vetting anything he uses as a source. If he's willing to plug Prism of all people as a source and use Prism's dumbass investigation as a basis for his conclusions, it goes to show that Dogpack has and will make premature conclusions before the information is substantiated, which is incredibly dangerous. This all goes to show that Dogpack is not as qualified or reputable as a lot of people give him credit for. It goes to show that Dogpack has repeatedly lied, embellished information, and has some very shady and murky motivations behind this that are filled with extreme biases. This much is true, and people are already catching on and refusing to take what he says seriously because he has poisoned the well of information so much. When you poison the well that much, it's only obvious that people will refuse to drink from it. So now his motivations are being questioned, his authenticity is being questioned, all of the information that he has shown a light on is now being questioned because how much has he failed to accurately portray? What sources did he fail to vet? What people has he talked to that may have been lying about their experiences or their motivations? Why? Why did he do all of this? Was it because he wanted to tarnish Mr. Beast's career and prop himself up as some hero? At the end of the day, Dogpack is not the person to be handling this information anymore, and honestly, he never was. So from this point forward, he should be expected to hand everything he has off to someone more qualified than he is, because evidently, he is not. That's all I got for today. Later.